ladies and gentlemen. Well, I've got two optical fibre transceivers here to have a look at. This one here is one of my Intel 850 nanometers one, and uh, I'm not taking it apart completely because I do actually still want to use it. Um, but this one here is an 850 nanometer short range, uh, 4 gigabit transceiver, which I'm using for gigabit Ethernet purposes. And uh, it uses a multi-mode fiber, so in other words, the optical fiber core is design is 62 or 50 micrometers depending on the type of optical fiber. This one here is the uh, 155 megabit one that's completely useless to me. Um, so I've stripped right down and this is a uh, I think 1310 nanometer um, laser. Um, and this is designed for single mode fiber. So this one here, when connected to a, a nine micron uh, fiber, should have a range of approximately ten kilometers. And this one, when connected to a fifty micron fiber, should have a range of about uh, three hundred to four hundred meters. So let's take a little look at the difference in construction. Well. This one here, I, I'm not taking it apart to see the whole thing, but this chip on the top is the DS1859, and this is a uh, Maxim chip, and it's actually um, a dual programmable resistor. So in other words, this is a chip that acts as two resist variable resistors which are controllable under um, electronic control. So essentially the microprocessor can dial in a resistance and the... 4 gigahertz analog signal will act as if the chip is a resistor. Very clever device. And presumably it's used for temperature control on the laser because actually this chip has a built-in memory and a built-in thermistor and it will automatically adjust the resistances according to the chip's temperature. So it's used for stabilizing the laser and the photodiode. So let's take a quick look then at the actual construction of the lasers. And actually, if you look at the laser, which is the one on the right, it just looks a bit like an LED in a metal can uh, inside a plastic sheath. And the photodiode essentially looks like a photodiode in a metal can with a glass top inside a plastic sheath. And actually, if we turn it around and look at the optical ports, you can actually see the actual aperture for the laser and for the photodiode inside these plastic ferrules. These plastic ferrules are the guides into which the fiber optic connect fits in order to align the fiber precisely with the actual light source or detector. Let's take a look at the um, single mode fiber one by comparison. In this case we've got the laser which is installed inside this metal can and inside the metal can are lenses and actually an optical fiber and on the end we have this metal sheath and if one looks inside it hopefully I'll be able to show you this there is actually a ceramic ferrule, a polished ceramic guide ferrule to which mates with the fiber optic connector on the laser side and that is to ensure the very high precision needed to line up the fiber with fibre in the connector with the fibre attached to the laser. And of course, as the actual fibre core is only 9 microns, you need to get the alignment really within 1 micron in order to avoid a super severe loss of your light signal. You don't need quite such high precision on the, on the receiver side, and there's no ferrule there essentially, and indeed the two don't actually mate in contact as I showed in the other video. We'll take a quick look at some of the chips on this transceiver because they are quite interesting. So let's take a look at these two here. This one and this one are the same type of chip. These are um, 2025 they're marked and these are actually um, power monitoring chips. They're designed to check power voltage and activate the rest of the circuit when the voltage is within acceptable limits. And you can see adjacent to the chips, you can see these connectors, and some of them have longer uh, pins than the other. And these are the long ones are the power connectors, and the short ones are the data connectors. And 
These are designed for hot swapping so that when you insert this into the connector, these long pins connect first and then the data pins connect afterwards. This ensures that when you plug it in, the power comes on first, then the data comes on and avoids blowing up delicate circuits. Let's move on. This chip here um, is a transceiver. It basically just takes the digital signal from here, from these two pins, and cleans it up, ready for the rest of the circuit. This chip here is the laser controller, and it's got current source, voltage regulators, and all the other bits and pieces for controlling the laser with a high-speed digital signal. And on the back, we've got a few bits and bobs here. These things here are just transistor packs, two transistors, two transistors, two transistors, two transistors. This one here is an EEPROM, flat bit of flash memory which contains configuration information for the transceiver, and I've not been able to identify this one here. It's marked MP. AG A10. I have no idea what it is. I can't find any references to it whatsoever. Um, I'm afraid I can't really show you what's on the other side of this because actually I don't want to completely destroy it. But uh, I hope you found that uh, interesting. Thanks for watching.